What is up, freaks? Welcome back to Tales from the Crypt. It's your boy Marty Bent coming from his in-law's basement the day after Thanksgiving. Matthew, how are we? How was your Thanksgiving? The view over there is quite nice behind you. Yeah, looks like a little bit of a rape dungeon. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's just a basement. It's just an old basement, you know. It's very comfortable down here. I have a space heater to my right, keeping my legs warm. Uh, my, my father-in-law will bring food down here every once in a while when I get hungry. Uh, I'm not allowed upstairs, so this is my little lair here at the in-laws, and very happy to be recording the first episode of Rabbit Hole, Recor- uh, Rabbit Hole Recap from this place. Uh, yep, I definitely uh, a recipe to build a strong relationship between you and your in-laws. I love it. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? You had a good yeah. one? It's a good one. Low-key this year. Not a lot of travel. Um, lucky that uh, my wife and I, our parents, are within very short distance of each other so we can go hop from house to house uh very low-key i was in bed by ten thirty last night how about you feeling real grateful I had delicious uh food uh, I, I spent it with uh my my lady's family as well so that was that was a really good time and uh i really enjoyed it and also your sh- your shout out on the bent uh your your pre-thanksgiving oh. day shout out really appreciate that uh brought a tear to my Matt, eye i am thankful for you well, I'm thankful for you. You uh, it produced a lot of great content here at TFTC and uh, the show. Just over a year old now. I'm very thankful that we decided to do this. It's been fun, hasn't it? Fuck yes, it feels like an eternity. It does. It does. All right. Uh, before we get into the meat of the topics, I thought it was going to be a light week, um, considering the holidays. But the list is pretty robust, so we got a lot to talk about. A lot going on um, right now. The current price of Bitcoin, according to the TFTC. Dot io ticker is waiting seven thousand seven hundred sixty three dollars and nine cents uh, the current block height is six hundred five thousand nine hundred sixteen and the current hash rate it's a lot higher than one it dipped down to like uh 70 in the high 60s earlier this week right now it's currently standing at 92.87 exa hash per second price and a uh, hash rate have been pretty volatile this this week, if you guys been following it wrong, yeah, I mean following it wrong, price pumped along. and then hash pumped. What? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, but the price dumped too. The hash dumped. Right, like exactly. It's been up and down all week. Yeah. Um, all right. Before we get into the meat of everything, this episode of, of Rabbit Hole Recap is brought to you by Casa Freaks. How confident are you in your key security? What keeps you up at night with your personal opsec? Do you even have a fucking plan for your for your Bitcoin? Our friends at Casa have drummed up one of the smartest. And most secure ways to hold to hodl your Bitcoin. No KYC, no altcoins, no percentage fee on your Bitcoin. No one be standing between you and your keys. Our friends at Casa are here to help you with your Bitcoin security. Use the promo code TFTC to get up to two hundred fifty dollars off your Casa membership, uh, or hit the hit up their team directly at membership at team Casa for a free demo. Put them through the test with all your hardest offset questions. They have packages if you're in a diamond or platinum membership. Uh, package you're going to get 24 7 vip service dedicated client advisor and custom onboarding an opsec plan no matter what uh package you're in all members uh all memberships come with a full set of hardware wallets for your multi-sig plus the casa node plus faraday bags and early access to early casa products go use the code tftc go to keys.casa slash keymaster check out their multi-sig setups and then tell them we sent you get up to 250 dollars off with the code tftc email them to membership at team.casa This episode of Tales from the Crypt is also brought to you by your friends at the Cash App. As you know, Cash App is the simplest way to send and save money, and now it's the simplest way to try to grow your money. You guys have already been introduced to this. You've been listening to this podcast for a while. Introducing Cash App Investing. Unlike investing tools that only let you buy entire shares of a stock, Cash App lets you instantly invest as little or as much as you want. This way, when your favorite company's stock is just a little too expensive, you can still own a piece with as little as $1. We're stacking slivers of shares here, freaks. And because Cash App is directly connected to your bank account, there are no four to five day waiting periods for inbound transfers, so you can start investing today. Brokerage services are provided by Cash App Investing, a subsidiary of Square and member SIPC. And as always, when you sign up, use the code StackingSats. You're going to get $10 off or excuse me, you're going to get $10 when you sign up. And then the Cash App is going to send $10 to our good friends at Owls Lacrosse. <laughs> Not that dirtbag owl. So download the Cash App today from the App Store or the Google Play Store today. And uh, speaking of Al, our friend Al, uh, just shout out ad for the TFTC.io merch store here. Official free ad read for, for the TFTC merch store. Uh, we just put up a bunch of new merch. Cut prices by 20%. 
Uh, we are not, uh, as you can tell, if you've been listening and reading for a while and you go to our site, we are uh, doing the best that we can with as little as possible. So even small things like slashing the full price and showing the 20% off price is something we're still working on. So trust me, the prices are 20% off, even <laughs> though uh, it may not <laughs> it may not be easy to tell from the page. Um, but we have an Owl's Lacrosse shirt that Dirtbag Al uh, sent us a design, and he's actually not being a dirtbag. We're going to send 20% of the profits that we make on that shirt and sweatshirt in particular to the true Owl's Lacrosse, Owl's, O-W-L-S. It, um, it literally sounds the same regardless of what you say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, my, I can hear uh, my father-in-law being disappointed about my poor pronunciation from upstairs. But the new designs look dope. They're up 20% off. Uh, one thing is uh, the white stacking sats long sleeve will be back up on the store shortly. Uh, we're going to handle that after this episode. Yeah. Um, and thank yeah, you for your I'm support. Put that up after this episode. Because yeah, guys, buying merch is a great way to support us. Uh, you know, every, every, every sat counts. Every sat does count. Um, we're stacking sats here. Um, and when you're stacking sats, make sure you have a security plan in play too. If you're stacking sats and you don't want to sell your sats, our friends at Unchained Capital are here to give you a U.S. dollar loan that's collateralized with Bitcoin. So you guys know all about them. Unchained-capital.com. Uh, they've been good friends of ours for a while. They have two uh, incredible, they have more than two products. They have incredible product suite. Uh, they have a multi-sig setup, their vault program. Uh, you can engage in a multi sig quorum with uh, Unchained. They will be that. Uh, they will be that uh, two that second signer in a two or three setup or a different N of M setup for you if you need them. Uh, you can also just do it directly without them with their multi sig setups. And then they have their again, like I mentioned earlier, their loan products. So if you don't want to sell your Bitcoin, you want to get cash. You need to get access to cash. Unchained will let you use your Bitcoin to get a Bitcoin collateralized excuse me, a U.S. dollar loan that's collateralized by Bitcoin. So you don't have to sell your sats on top of that. They're badass Bitcoiners working on dope open source projects. We talked about Caravan last week, which is their most recent um, desktop app Desktop app that will allow you to set up a multi-sig setup by yourself without them. Uh, there are other things like Slip39, uh, uh, Hermit, and a bunch of other shit. Druve, Joe, Parker, and crew at uh, Unchained are killing it. Go to unchained-capital.com. And check them out today. Whew. Through through the ad rates, we're done. We do have a shout out though. <laughs> Fuck yes. This is a funny shit. Okay, this is a funny shout out. And uh, uh, warning you, freaks, I'm gonna have to get loud at the end. Okay. So this is a message from Relevant Peter, your favorite maximalist, favorite maximalist, wishing you a merry Christmas and a happy happening. How lucky. We are to be so early in the rise of such an important technology, surrounded by some of the smartest people in the world. Stay humble and stack sats. Preseason is almost over. All right. Holy that shit! That was one. I, I dug, I dug deep for you there, relevant Peter. Wait, okay. How did you know it had um, to be loud? Did he did he put it in caps or something? In, in, in parentheses, he said, "Marty, I need you to dig deep on this one." There you go. All right. So I'm not gonna. The man paid for a shout out. I, I, who am I to deny? Uh, deny the product that he asked for i'm right. i'm a fan That's of relative we... relevant peter on twitter so uh, i'm as well it's appreciated grateful for all you freaks out there that that listen and support the pot yeah and we're also grateful for the people working on bitcoin because without them uh we would not be here we would have nothing to talk about and the people working on bitcoin pushed through uh the official bitcoin core 0 0.19.0 release but isn't the most recent one 0 0.19.1 didn't they do like a quick push right after sure but I like the the write up by Bitcoin Magazine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think I, I think they might have done a quick push after the ma uh, major version upgrade at nineteen point zero. I think it might be nineteen point one. Not yeah, positive. It, though, no, but, it definitely is. It uh, definitely is. They definitely released okay. a quick release right after. Okay, um, and with this new update, back thirty two addresses are by default in the GUI in the Bitcoin Core GUI. Um, two block only outbound connections. Uh, no extra. extra is now default. It's extra. It's just two. they added two more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They added two more outbound connections by default. Um, Bloom filters have been deprecated. Uh, more support for con compact client side block filtering. Payment protocol support disabled from GUI. 
and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, so the the default now is 10 instead of 8. So it just adds more connections for your node. Um, and then... And this is this is the help against like the Erebus attack, correct? Yeah, just any kind of partitioning attacks, like uh, not partitioning attacks. Uh, uh, when you surround it, eclipse yeah. attacks, when you surround the node. No, I think I think partition's a uh, correct eclipse is well, more of like a sibyl. Well, you like surround it and then you partition it. Yeah. Um, and then exactly. bloom filters uh, is what the older light wallets used to use, like the mobile wallets and stuff, and some of them still use it. Uh, so nodes have historically been serving those filters. It's a very not good privacy way of um, handling it. Uh, so they they deprecated it in core, which means if you run a newer core node, it's not on by default, but it's the option is still there. You can still enable it if you if you so please. Yeah, and this is actually uh, the news of this major release is good uh, good to pair with something else we have on the list here, which is something that Bitmex Research dropped this morning, uh, which is they. Uh, did a test of a bunch of versions of Bitcoin Core going back to 2012, I believe, to see uh, what the initial block download is for each version. Um, and basically, they came to the conclusion that Bitcoin, if it had not been improved since 2012 at the code level, uh, specifically with libsec... Um, God, what's the number? Let me find it. Uh, the addition of... Um, Libs sec p two fifty six k, which has made uh, the IBD extremely more efficient. Um, so it's good to see that Bitcoin uh, is becoming more efficient over time. So this Matt, you want to talk more about Bitmex's research? I mean, it's a dramatic difference. I mean, they have charts and stuff. It's it's a major difference. I mean, I think uh, their comment there about. Uh, Bitcoin would have died without these efficiency improvements is a little bit provocative and clickbaity, but um, you know Bitcoin could have died for various reasons. Uh, but but yeah, these efficiency improvements are, are a really big deal, um, and it, you know that's where the priority should be, not just blindly increasing the the, the bandwidth required uh, by nodes. You know by increasing the block weight or the block size, you, you you go for efficiency first, and you try and make the most out of what we have. Yeah, and that's why we here at TFTC like to focus on what some would deem as boring and probably not uh, exciting upgrades, but things like Erlay, um, which would help with bandwidth, and uh, assume UTXO, which would help with IBD um, times for people running first no full nodes for the first time. It's stuff like that that really we should be focusing on first, like you said, efficiency gains before uh, doing anything critical to the consensus protocol. The other thing is, uh, just for the freaks out there, IBD, uh, initial block download, it refers to the sync time when you first um, when you first launch a node. It needs to uh, sync all the historical blocks. Um, so that is, you know, the most time-consuming process uh, of, of running your own node. So it's, it's always good to get that down. Yeah. And so just looking at the numbers here, going all, they went all the way back to version 0 0.8.6, and that running on Linux VPS, it took 4.1 days to download, whereas uh, core version 19.0 uh, took less than a day, uh, less than half a day on a MacBook Pro. Um, so it's very encouraging. Indeed it is. Um, also encouraging, Cold Card released new firmware, 3.0.5. Um, the big thing that came with this update is that it can now display QR codes directly on the Cold Card screen. So you can theoretically have your Cold Card completely offline, um, you know, plugged into a power bank, uh, and you can toggle through your addresses, show the QR code, and just deposit right in, which I think is pretty fucking slick. Yeah. Shout out to Rodolfo. That news dropped, I believe, Wednesday night or yesterday, maybe even. Um, so it might have got lost in the fray of of the holiday season. But yeah, huge upgrade. Shout. I mean, we talk about cold card every week. They've been pushing out upgrades pretty pretty frequently these days. My favorite wallet. Um, yeah. Favorite wallet. Now you have a favorite bot on Twitter. Now I re recently uh, noticed uh, you love responding to this bot, the backed bot, the backed volume bot. One of the best bots on Twitter right now. 
<laughs> that volume is What's your fascination. That volume is taking off, man. It's taking off. Yeah. So, in case you missed it, Thursday's back Bitcoin monthly futures volume on uh, Thanksgiving, no less. Uh, traded contracts were down uh, at two thousand eight hundred thirty-two, but um, they hit an all-time hot traded con. Wait, I'm trying to. How am I reading this? I don't know what you're reading, but uh, Wednesday was the all-time high, right? Cause ah, that's what it was. Wednesday was yes, yes, excuse me, yes, that's what it is. They reported. Um, okay, so Wednesday there was five thousand six hundred seventy-one uh, v- contract volume, which is all-time high, and then Thursday yesterday during Thanksgiving that was cut in half at uh, two thousand eight hundred thirty-two. Um, it'd be interesting to see what it is today. So the open interest. Right now is four point three one million dollars, which is four uh, percent growth from from the day before. Yeah. So on Wednesday, forty two million dollars worth of Bitcoin was traded on backed, which is the new uh, physically settled uh, Bitcoin futures exchange that's launched that was launched by uh, ICE, um, which is an extremely established financial player. Uh, so so these are. You know, I'm not going to say in, it's not inst- necessarily institutional money as uh, some people like to say, but um, this is more a professional uh, operation, right? This is the, the people that are trading there are, you know, theoretically should be like a more sophisticated trader um, than our tradition, than, than our regular retail Bitcoin exchanges, right? So watching that volume increase, um, especially as the price has been going down uh, recently uh, is, is just, very i think it's a very important number to watch let me put it that way yeah so go follow the the bot if you're not following it don't worry matt will be responding to it at least once a day so you'll so you'll get uh you'll get those tweets in your in your timeline my two little eyes um, i feel like that's like it's like a nice <laughs> balance between retweeting it right and and uh just not doing anything with it is you know i'm just like up oh, just keeping an eye on it just checking this out Checking this out. So that's, yeah, so backed, like you were saying, a lot of people uh, associate institutional investors and more uh, in sophisticated investors with those products. Um, but if you go to the under, under, uh, the other end of the spectrum of people using Bitcoin, there's been some great pieces this week on uh, people in developing countries and uh, other places around the world and how they use Bitcoin in particular. Uh, I wrote about this on Monday. Our boy Matt Alborg uh who's been writing all the great uh, research pieces on how people are using Bitcoin on these P2P exchanges, local Bitcoin and Paxful in particular. On Monday, he dove deep into the Paxful's uh, volume, particularly in Nigeria, and really uh, dove into how Nigerians are using uh, Bitcoin and gift cards, uh, online gift cards as a sort of remittance flow. um, And it was just a fascinating article it's crazy to see how people are leveraging Bitcoin and it is truly being used to route around sanctions and uh, 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 over over expensive uh, remittance uh, products like Western Union. Matt fucking like killed it with that analysis. Everyone should go read it. He's got some nice charts, some nice pictures. Um, what's really interesting is that two things are so this was specifically Nigerians with remittance that he that he focused on. And there's two interesting things, or there's a couple interesting things that have led this to be one of the preferred ways of of handling remittance, or a growing way at least. Um, The first is that their currency fucking sucks. The second thing is that there's like a 30% overhead if you use the traditional system, if you use like Western Union or something like that. Um, So as long as, because the way Paxful works is like people are, Nigerians in America are buying gift cards. Then they're selling the gift cards on Paxful for Bitcoin, and they take a cut there. They're usually sold at a discount. So you sell like an Amazon gift card, um, and it's sold for like 60% of the price. And then that Bitcoin is sent to a Nigerian, and then the Nigerian converts it into local currency. And that whole process takes them about like 30 minutes, so it's a lot quicker. But there is that discount. They, They have to pay that cut. And the reason it's still competitive is because Western Union is at like a 33% cut. Uh, all said and done, when you factor in everything that's th- that they don't use the black market exchange rate, they're using the 
the official exchange rate, which is it's more of a bullshit number. Uh, all said and done, it comes out to about 33%. And then the other thing is Western unions in Nigeria are only located in banks. Uh, so those banks are often closed, as banks are. Um, and then the last thing is, I guess, some Western Union outlets have blocked Nigeria specifically because of uh, carding scams and stuff like that, or money laundering concerns. Yeah, it's um, it's so fascinating how creative people are getting, right? So the gift card remittance, like the flow you were describing, is so crazy. Like somebody here in America will go to a Seven Eleven buy. Uh, a gift card get the receipt with the promo numbers and that's basically how they get the gift cards and remit it to uh, nigeria they take a picture of the receipt with the codes and they send it to their family members who then redeem it and sell it for go through the whole flow that matt was describing and again it's just humans are very creative and bitcoin is a tool that can enable that creativity as we're seeing it's uh people are using it in creative ways and he even showed like there's different discounts depending on which type of gift card you get. Like people like Amazon yeah. and Walmart because you can like get anything at those places. Like it's, you know, it's close to Steam cash. Steam was another big one. Yeah, digital stuff um, is, is big because it's digital so you don't have to ship anything so you can sell it globally. Um, yeah, and they were, another interesting thing, they were using this this flow to, to, bootstrap, uh, to bootstrap like e-com sites and supply chains for e-com sites like globally. Because they were allowed to drop shippers. use Amazon gift cards. Yeah, yeah. Drop sh- they're using it to drop ship too. Um, it's fascinating. Again, and that's if people want to hate on Bitcoin and call it inefficient or whatever, but it is, again, a tool that is enabling creative uh, ways uh, of moving money across the world. Yeah, I mean, and one of the uh, things that like Bitcoin haters love to talk about is that they say like volatility um, is too big of an issue. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, it's a scarce asset. Like, it's going to be volatile now. That volatility should decrease over time as liquidity increases. Um, but they, they use volatility as an argument, and they use fees as an argument. Um, but when you compare it to some of these incumbent systems with the overhead of 33%, you know, it doesn't really take that much uh, to be a market improvement over that. Yeah. Yeah. We also had um, two great posts by... Uh, Lee Cohen of uh, CoinDesk. Um, she's I, she's definitely the best reporter at CoinDesk. She's, all of her pieces are, are worth reading, in my opinion. Um, but both of these focused on using Bitcoin in crisis areas, uh, whether that's political crisis, economic crisis, um, and and both. And I, I really like that she covers the nuance. You know, it, there's. There's a lot of nuance to these subjects. You know, the best time to buy Bitcoin, the best if you need Bitcoin in a crisis, like you should have it beforehand. Um, it is, it, it's the unfortunate reality, especially you know until we have like full circular Bitcoin economies in a lot of these places. Um, and so she covers all of that, and but at, at the same time, she covers how uh, they're using it in Lebanon um, to get through their yeah. financial blockade. Yeah. So the the one article popped around the world and really highlighted how Bitcoin isn't uh, isn't a panacea or isn't a, an end-all be-all for these people, but it's, it's helping, but maybe not in uh, every way that ardent Bitcoiners think it can, uh, at least yet. Again, this, this will take time with network effect and liquidity and all that stuff. But then the Lebanese article was, uh, was very interesting, too, because it seems like as the banking crisis in Lebanon continues and their banks are closed, people are using Bitcoin to buy goods. Like one, one guy talked about sending a hundred thousand dollars to Saudi Arabia for energy drinks. Yeah. I mean that, that was the big one for me. Uh, they talked about families and they talked about, uh, you know, families with remittance and stuff, sending it from abroad. But they talked about this one businessman who that's how he gets his, got his supplies in, um, because of the, so Lebanon's banks have been closed for weeks now. Um, I think they might have reopened with limits on in place, like very low limits. Uh, so, so he needed to get a large shipment in, uh, and Bitcoin is uniquely uh, suited to to sending larger payments, right? I mean, so it's it's just really yeah. good to see. Um, but the other thing she mentioned in the other one is like Iran, like they cut they cut the internet for everybody. Right. Right. So like if you don't have shut it down, if you don't have like Bitcoin and, you know, mesh nets and satellite links and stuff in place already before that happens, like you're shit out of luck. Like there's there's not much I could, you know, Bitcoin doesn't fix that yet. 
yet being the keyword. No. Yeah, and uh, again, you, these alternative transaction relay uh, systems are very important. Mesh networking satellites. We need to make Bitcoin as robust as possible because, as we saw in Iran, uh, the government exercised their their force to shut down the internet and just literally flip the switch and turn off the internet for their whole goddamn country. It's pretty fucking crazy. It could happen. It could happen to you, even here in America. Don't worry. I mean, do worry. Be be, be aware. Prepare. Be aware. Prepare now. Or yes, regret later. Prepared. Prepare now, regret later, and you might want to do this with WhatsApp, too, because uh, Telegram's Durav, he's one of the founders of Telegram, came out with a uh, pretty scathing indictment of WhatsApp. They seem to be a front for the state, uh, and Facebook is basically allowing uh, backdoors into the app since they've acquired it, and it's the latest one that was exploited. Somebody just had to send you a video, and if you watched it, they were able to access not only all the information on your WhatsApp, but your whole goddamn phone, all your data, all your pictures. Um, pretty insane. Yeah, that's fucked up. Um, and, I mean, the other big one is uh, they have – they, like, push you to back up into the cloud, and when they back up, it's unencrypted. So if even if you know not to do that, no one should be using the backup feature on WhatsApp if you have to use WhatsApp. Um, the person you're you're speaking to, you have to trust that they're not doing it as well. Otherwise – um, it's backing up unencrypted to American cloud providers. Uh, it, w- one thing to keep in mind here is that, you know, Telegram is a competitor to WhatsApp, so obviously he's going to shit on them. Uh, you know, Telegram might be, uh, you know, with Telegram, Telegram is not. So I thought this would be a good moment to talk about uh, messaging options because uh, a lot of people are curious. When I posted it, they were like, what is, you know, what is the best option for me? And, and there's, there's no perfect option. Um, you know, PGP is, is fucking great. Uh, it's not very UX friendly, and you can send PGP messages over any of these, you know, any kind of messaging client. Um, then you have iMessage, which is super popular in America. Um, it's like mildly encrypted. It is encrypted, though, end to end. So it's better than like a text message. Then you have Signal, which is encrypted better. Um, but it has a phone number requirement, which I don't love. So, like, you kind of want to use that with a burner if possible. Um, Telegram is not encrypted by default. Uh, but uh, So group chats aren't encrypted at all, but you can do the secret chat. Uh, but they're using some kind of proprietary encryption there, which isn't the best, you know. And then, um, and then you have Wire, uh, which recently got acquired by an American company, and they were being really sketchy about it. Or they didn't get acquired by an American company. They moved their jurisdiction to America, and they were, like, acting kind of sketchy about it. But that doesn't require a phone number. Um, that's also end-to-end encrypted. And then Keybase, which is my favorite, doesn't require a phone number. Uh, group chats are default encrypted. Uh, they do have, you know, the stellar shitcoin integration, so fuck them for that. But besides that, it's a, it's a very great platform, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a Keybase, good platform. Keybase is open source, too. Yeah, it's open source. Uh, so is Signal. Um, I think Signal servers might be closed, but um, so, that, so that's obviously good to see. No one should be using WhatsApp, but it does have a network effect, so I understand why some people use it still. Uh, yeah, and I, I think that's like, oh, and the nice thing is Keybase also, like, for group chats, like, we have a Bitcoin group on uh, Keybase, if you search Bitcoin BTC, um, we have over 400 people in there. You can set in the group chat, you can set uh, the message explosion uh, default, and then individual users can set their explosion uh, sh- shorter or long, uh, shorter if they want. Um, so basically, the, the message self-destructs. And one of the things here to keep in mind with group chats is even if they're encrypted, all it takes is one person uh, to either be a mole or compromised like if a person's computer is compromised and they're in the key base chat then all their messages could be you know seen so it's nice to have the ex- the explosion so the messages disappear over time reduces your risk long term and just in general when you're using any kind of messaging service you know assume it's compromised act accordingly yes yes um now it's crazy everything has to take into consideration with this stuff with uh ideally these um these chat apps in their final form will be dissident tech. You'll be able to chat encrypted without backdoors and uh, basically plan stuff and 
in in privacy privacy freaks it's not it's not a bad thing don't worry and uh, they want to make you think that privacy is terrible and they need to know everything you're doing your goddamn life tell them to leave you the fuck alone um i dream for the day that this shit won't be filled with fucking nuance let me tell you marty let me tell you oh well well we we have many discussions about that (laughs) um i'm dreaming for that day as well um speaking of dissident tech our good friend alex gladstein from the human rights foundation um and just an incredible bitcoiner he gave a dope uh speech i i forget where but it was on bitcoin versus big brother and we're going to link to that uh in the show notes alex is just doing an incredible job getting in front of very important normies and telling them that bitcoin is essential for our future it was at something called slush hq which is not yes, related yes, yes. to the, the the mining company yes uh alex is um, not only awesome but uh, I think he might be the best Bitcoin show we have. Um, he's extremely yeah. convincing arguments. I, I always I, I like to I like to use his videos um, and his interview. His interview with you on on Tales from the Crypt was really great. I love to use those um, to send to newcomers who are asking, you know, why Bitcoin? Yeah, no, that's actually Alex's first human rights foundation talk that was on youtube i believe like eight months ago was my uh most effective pre-coiner uh conversion tool um into a coiner he's extremely convincing i watch it i'm like okay matt be more like alex you got this (laughs) yes yes and we're all trying to help people that have fucked up money problems people in venezuela are using runescape for additional income they're literally playing this video game and mining gold in this game that they can then sell on a secondary market as a job like that is what venezuela has been deduced to people playing a game and mine doing one of the most monotonous uh actions in the game but for hours on end it's it's pretty crazy because well first of all they're selling it for bitcoin um because they you know they need a digital uh censorship resistant currency there because it's not a as approved use of runescape gold you're not like allowed to do that they don't support it um one thing to keep in mind here is that i the article said the average income in venezuela or the, the minimum wage in venezuela is like seven dollars a month um someone in my comments said it's like 350 or something so maybe it's like official rate versus unofficial rate um but these guys are bringing in up to 40 dollars a month so it's a massive difference uh and so there's basically global arbitrage is going on there. So other people, it's not worth their time. You know, I'm not going to do that for $40 a month. For them, it's worth it. Um, and the other thing I'd like to highlight here is, is a perfect example of why we should just have sats in games. Like, why are we dealing with this, you know, secondary market where you're selling it? Why not have real money as the, as the unit? And I, I think gamers will demand it. I think... Um, the incumbents will be resistant to it, but you know, upstarts and smaller publishers will be the ones who lead the way. And as gamers start demanding it, then the then the bigger publishers will have to follow suit. And if if regulators you know decide to try and slow them down, and stop them, then then the great old American lobby system will will jump in there and <laughs> and will eventually they'll they'll join the fray. Old reliable, old reliable, yeah. Good old American regulatory capture system. Um, yeah, there's a um, this week. There was a lot of like exchange hacks and exit scams this week. Actually, two in particular. Uh, South Korea had an exchange up bit that was allegedly hacked. Three hundred forty-two thousand ETH uh, were stolen and sent to uh, an address that is being tracked right now. They've tried to send some of the ETH to Huobi. And so, a couple, I think Binance as well. So that's like $50 million about. Um, we, yeah. we actually dumped on that news, which is hilarious because uh, they didn't steal Bitcoin. They stole ETH. But we dumped to around like 6,800, 6,700 before this most recent upswing. So it was like one last hurrah uh, to, to scare out some, some bears uh, from their position. Uh, Upbit is a more known exchange. I've known about it. I think they're a pretty big South Korean exchange. Uh, they locked everything down afterwards. It looks like shit will be okay. 
there. Um, you know, this is why you have hot wallets and cold wallets. They just pulled from the hot wallet, so it was segregated funds. Um, but it's a good time to remember, you know, remind everyone, not your keys, not your coins. Like, expect I, they're making everyone whole too. But you know, expect to lose your money um, if you put your money on an exchange and uh, act accordingly, right? Proceed accordingly. But this other exchange yeah. that like announced today, like IDAX or whatever, that yeah, dude just dude just woke up and ran away with the treasure. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of IDAX before. Like, have you heard? Did you? Neither have I. Yeah, this is the first. So like. When these like little fly by night bullshit exchanges like shit happens, then like it's 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 not really news, in my opinion. Yeah, and so if you are out there using one of these fly the night bullshit exchanges and it's not very popular, uh, just be aware, be aware. Try out Bisc or something like that. They're our good friends Cash App, they're pretty reputable as well. I don't think Jack's going to run away with the treasure. Um, just be aware. And and there was actually going back to Upbit, the Korean exchange. There was a interesting theory I saw on Twitter. Uh, they had another hack about two years ago, and the hack amount uh, is strikingly similar to the amount they owe in taxes, and they're allowed to write the, that amount off uh, as a loss if they are stolen funds. Um, so that was just interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm sure. Theory. Theory. I'm sh- Not corroborated at all. I'm sure the, the authorities will do some good old-fashioned police work to figure it out. Um, I didn't know that. That's interesting. That that does make that does make a lot of sense to me. Uh, just some for some free shout outs, right? Cash App is is uh, U.S. only. Um, we love Bisc here. Bisc is global. Um, Hoddle Hoddle is global, but America very good exchange. Um, Bull Bitcoin in Canada is really good. Get Bitter in Europe is awesome. Um, and and the nice thing about Hoddle Hoddle, the all all I, everyone I just. Uh, Everyone I just listed there is non-custodial, uh, except for Cash App. But Cash App is very quick Cash to withdraw. Not. Yes, and they're they're very Bitcoin focused as well. Um, so yeah, go check them out again. Be aware of these like a Quadriga X. I know a lot of people that are on Quadriga, and, and that had problems for for a few years. So if, again, these exchanges, this is the story throughout Bitcoin's history. Like people were talking about Mt. Gox potentially being on, insolvent for like a year and a half before shit finally hit the fan if you ever start hearing rumors or if your exchange just doesn't allow you to take money off for some reason for any period of time it should have alarm bells ringing in your head well i mean if they're not letting you take money off then what are you gonna do about it but yeah no just always be yeah. suspicious and and prefer like these non-custodial services are even better because you don't even have to worry about it uh but even if you use a custodial service just pull your money off right away um if if you're using it for buying bitcoin just uh, just always, you know, only keep on exchanges what you can afford to lose. Yes, and make sure while we're giving up this advice, man. That's why the nuance, the nuance is so hard in this space. Like, make sure you are able to secure and custody your keys too. Test it out. Set up a bunch of wallets. Send little amounts. Develop confidence. Develop a strategy. Um, but yeah, when you do take those UTXOs into your possession, there's extreme ownership that comes with it. So be responsible. Yeah, I mean, one of the simplest things you can do there, uh, you know, we have some guides on, on TFDC. Uh, we're doing our second Citadel workshop. It's coming up on December 5th. Uh, it is sold out already, but we're, we're going to release a whole guide process. Uh, with It's going to like step by step with pictures and stuff about how to use the cold card uh, with your own node. Uh, which will be helpful to people. So stay tuned for that. But the simplest thing you can do is to use multiple methods. Like if you're storing your Bitcoin in in multiple ways, two or three different ways, um, then if one, if you fuck up one, then at least you didn't lose the whole, uh, the whole stash. Yes. Yes. Diversify your risk freaks in all areas of life, not just Bitcoin, you know, you gotta diversify that risk everywhere. And there's, there's really nice discounts on the top two hardware wallets right now, cold card and treasure T. So, if you need more hardware wallets, consider that. Yep. And use the code TFTC for cold card. Um, we'll get 5% off of the MK3. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, type it in and you'll see what you'll get. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so did you read Eric next. Wall's write-up on stable coins? I have not yet. I have not, to be completely honest. So, so it's a 19-minute read. I have not dove into yet so actually you know i'm a big hater uh i, I say sats are my stable coin uh very frequently here because sats are my stable coin uh and but because stable coins have trusted third-party risk right so so it's the same thing we were talking about with exchanges 
um, where, you know, not your keys, not your coins. Like at any moment you can lose that money. But Eric does a really good job of explaining the nuances uh, to all these different stablecoin platforms uh, and the privacy implications. And, and the reason these are important is we've talked about this on the pod before um, is is like places like Venezuela and Nigeria and stuff that might not have nice, you know, easy fiat integration. And especially to get access to USD, uh, these do provide uh, some utility to those people there. But as long as they understand the risks and 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 appreciate them. So I actually, surprisingly enough, I, I, I met when I met Eric in Riga, I told him I'd be happy to look this over. So I actually like I looked it over, gave him feedback, read the whole thing. Um, and it's it's very good. Uh, I think he did a really good job of explaining the different nuances of it. Yeah, Eric is uh, doing some very good research. He's he's fucking a beast with this shit like his lightning he did a presentation on lightning privacy um at it wasn't rigo where was it it was somewhere it was in berlin at the lightning uh, conference berlin yeah that's an incredible we've talked about that uh, in the past but that's an incredible uh speech that you should look up and he eric's just doing a really good job of trying to uh, shine a light on where these technologies are underserving uh, the user's needs particularly around privacy yeah this is his this is part of his work with the human rights foundation um, so definitely give that give that a read. Uh, if you're inter- if you're if you have any intention of using stable coins, which I don't, but if you do, give this a read before you use them. Um, it, it does it does really highlight all of them. And and one thing b- really worth mentioning, I think, is I think the value prop of U.S. you know tether on uh, liquid is going to become very interesting because they have confidential transactions, so the amounts. Um, and asset type are blinded. So they don't even know you're sending Tether. They don't know how much Tether you're sending. And then you combine that with CoinJoin, and all of a sudden, it's a very private stable coin. It does have the third-party risks, you know, and trusted third parties are security holes. Um, but but even very that third-party risk is a federated is a federated well, risk. Well, right? I'm not even that risk. I mean, I don't think... I think the federation comes second uh, to the actual Tether risk, which is you have tether. to trust Tether. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things... Yeah. Um, that he made very clear in the in the article that a lot of people, some people gave him shit in the comments without reading it, um, is that at the end of the day, like what chain these these you know fiat backed uh, stable coins run on doesn't really matter that much in terms of security because who you're really trusting is the ultimate issuer on the other side, whether that's Gemini or Tether or whatever. Um, if there's some kind of issue with the underlying chain. They can just, you know, they can move to another chain or something. They can do a snapshot and just move to another chain. You have to trust them. They're the ultimate ones. They're the arbiters. They're the ones you're trusting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but keep following Eric's work. It's uh, he's doing again. He's doing an incredible job. Really helping educate uh, about the shortcomings of these technologies around privacy and and how people are using them. That's what I think. Uh, was great about this week, especially going back to Matt Alborg's piece, like doing that kind of research and actually figuring out how people on the ground are using Bitcoin is huge because then that allows us to design better products for these people, right? So the more hands-on research and rolling the sleeves up and talking to people, figuring out how they're using this stuff uh, is is a net positive in the long run. And Eric is one of the soldiers really, really pushing that forward. Yeah, I mean, what's great about both uh, Matt's, Matt's analysis and uh, Lee's articles is that they both heavily relied on on the ground, you know, f- you know first party um, quotes and testimony and whatnot, interviews. Yes, yes. Um, important work, good journalism. Good journalism by these guys. Um, are we journalists, Matt? No. We're just <laughs> dedicated Bitcoiners. That's true. Yes, we are not journalists. That are grateful to be at this that. time and place. I don't want to. I don't want that epithet thrown at me. I think. I think it uh, goes both ways. I think journalists would be offended for us calling ourselves journalists. And uh, that's true. That's I, true. I, you know, I don't want to. Why pigeonhole ourselves? We're Bitcoiners. That's true. Yeah, we're Bitcoiners. <laughs> um, this is this is something that you highlighted earlier this week and really pissed me off the dmv just straight up this was particularly about california's dmv they found out that they've been selling uh everybody's information to third parties 
uh, and it's uh, becoming people are becoming more aware that this seems to be a common practice across DMVs across the country. So you go to the DMV, you get your license, you get your driver's license, you get whatever you need to get. Uh, you give you them all your information, your social security number, where you live, how many kids you have, your family members, and then they're just taking that data and selling it to marketers. It's such fucking bullshit because you you basically need an ID to live in this country. You know, they've all but required it. It's like basically a requirement. And then they go and they sell it to private companies. They're making $50 million a year. Fuck you, man. Like, if you're going to, like, then, you know, why are we paying taxes then? So <laughs> you're going to you're gonna double dip on us? And it's just, there's so many elements of our society that are just, not private by design. It's the exact opposite of privacy. It's so ass backwards too. Like what the fuck? The government is making you take this information and then they're selling it to people. Like you said, their taxes not enough. Like what the, f how can you engage in that profit? Are they allowed to like engage in that type I mean, of activity? Clearly, but it's, it, Vice didn't say anything about it being illegal. Um, I'm, I, I bet when you get your license, there's like a little portion on the bottom where you sign when you sign that says like we might you know sell or give this to third parties um like this is like the right. one time where I've, i'd be like yeah just raise my taxes a little bit you know you need that 50 million <laughs> extra a year like you get so much tax money do you add two cents to my taxes and get you know get rid of this bullshit Matt, the tax money isn't enough. It'll never be. Enough. You know, that's gonna... that's the dirty that's the dirty truth. It doesn't matter how much they raise. It'll never be enough. Right. So be aware. Be aware. You're going to the DMV. Uh, you're getting fucked. They're selling your data. Um, it's the, the, like the morals in this country, people in America and all over the world. Wake up, people. Fight for privacy. You got wake the fuck up. You got to get a burner house and then list that address. <laughs> That's the key. Go to Jameson Lop. He he's got this down pat. He's got the uh, the recipe for for getting off the. You ground. know the other thing is this vote registration. I have a feeling they do that for that shit too, Ooh. which is fucked up. Yeah, exactly. Like you now have to I dox yourself Jameson. for that. Yeah. While I, while I have Jameson on top of my mind, I don't know if we talked about this on Rabbit Hole Recap. I definitely wrote about it in the bent, but uh, just association here with the Bitmax piece we were talking about earlier. Uh, where they where BitMEX did all of Bit or not all of but a lot of Bitcoin core versions going back to 2012. Jameson um, did a test of different Bitcoin implementations and so core Libitcoin, Bitcoin, GoCoin, all that stuff, and compared them and their their IBD process with their latest versions. Um, I'll find that link and throw that in the show notes too. That's an interesting piece. Bitcoin Core is the most efficient implementation right now and the the fastest IBD, uh, but. Uh, just thinking of that BitMEX piece we were talking about earlier, this is a good pairing with that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Also, on a more positive note, um, did you see this? I guess this bot was an older bot that got resurrected uh, at Fiat Health on Twitter. Did you see this thing? Yeah, yeah. It's given a sats per dollar. Sats per dollar and sats per, like, one unit Euro. of a bunch of other currencies, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so go check it out. At Fiat Health on Twitter. It's a bot. Uh, how often is it tweeting? Once an hour? Once a day? Uh, it's definitely not once an hour. It, it, so far, it looks like every two days. We'll see. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not so convinced that it's going to last this time. But if you give them some love, or him, her, they, giving them some love, then maybe we'll s see the bot continue. Um, we're we're closest to JPY parity. Uh, slow and steady. The yen coming for that yen ass, baby. One sat per yen. Um. Yeah, so go check out Fiat Health. Um, damn, dude, what a week! What a week! A lot of a uh, lot of vitriol on Twitter. Very lo lots week. of salt. I've opted out. Salt. I've opted out of the salt. Yeah, I try to. I try to give positive things too. I as uh, a lot of people like to say, Bitcoiners aren't innovative and aren't working on good tech. And as you freaks know, if you've been listening to Rabbit Hole Recap, it's far from the truth. So I made a little mini thread of uh, things that we've covered in the bent over the last few months of very uh, very exciting developments and efficiency gains within Bitcoin. So if you guys want to check that out, we'll, we'll link to that too. Positive, positive vibes. Yeah, and it, um, as always, the bench will be in the SAT standard as well. So if you subscribe to the newsletter, um, you can see it there. Oh, yeah. I, um, 
People are, yeah. I haven't told you this yet. But people are loving the Sat Standard. You could, you don't see the replies to the emails when they go out, but we've gotten at least five replies every Saturday. Oh fuck yes! I've had people DM me and say they like it, so that's good. Um, I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad you guys find it helpful. That's you know that's why we do everything we do here, um, and it, so that makes me happy. Uh, yeah. How about at Thanksgiving? Did um, was there any Bitcoin conversations at Thanksgiving? Did Uncle John, you know, tell you it was a Ponzi scheme? <laughs> I actually did have an Uncle John that I talked to Bitcoin uh, about my wife's. You know, he's technically not an uncle. He's a uh, boyfriend of my wife's aunt. I'm doxing my family here. Everyone has an Uncle uh, John, Marty. Yeah. Um, no, not combative at all. It was just genuinely curious. He didn't um, say whether or not he agreed with it or thought it would be successful or fail. Just genuinely wanted to learn and uh, about what we're doing here and what the fuck Bitcoin is. Uh, but I, my in-laws have been inundated with so much Bitcoin information over the years that I, I spare them these days. We don't really talk about it that much. <laughs> I mean, they're like one of the reasons you started writing the bent, right? I, uh, yeah. I think this was my first Thanksgiving in four or five years or something like that, where Bitcoin didn't come up once, which was kind of nice. It was just, I was yeah, just how incognito. That, how'd that feel? Yeah. I felt stealthy. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, no, I, again, she'll lightly, she'll lightly. Yeah, I mean, my, my lady's family has, like, really good, uh, table ethics. There was no politics, there was, there was no economics, no, no one was asking what you were doing. It was good. I appreciated it. Yeah, no, very, very similar at our, at our dinner, too. We spared all that, that nonsense. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you. Thank God we had a good Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, that's all we got. You got anything to riff on this week? No, I mean, it was kind of a quiet week. Uh, it was less quiet than I thought it was before I started making the list up. But, uh, you know, holidays in general, these next couple of months should be a little bit quieter, I think. Um, so there's no reason, really. In my, I think one of the beauties of RHR is that um, we don't feel the need to add fluff and bullshit to to your recap yeah yeah we are not going to feed you bullshit that we don't think you need to be fed only the bullshit that's going to make you stronger <laughs> stay humble stack sats no. freaks no well we're not done yet. i got some i got some riffing here uh Apologies. go check out the merch store go check out the merch store we got all that good merch coming out um i'm going to add a sweatshirt and a long sleeve shirt after i publish this episode what kind of sweatshirt and then yeah i um, Al's, or, we have Al's up uh, already. Sta- We're gonna put a st- I'm adding a stacking stats. Fuck yes, stacking stats that's what I want. I'll I'll be ordering one. I want a stacking stats. You do not have to order one. You should not even order that hat and sweatshirt that you're wearing now. You should be getting that stuff for free. I know, but I'm, uh, I get so excited that I don't feel like waiting <laughs> for my free <laughs> swag to come, so I I just buy it. This hat is dope. Yeah. The BTC pay hat is fucking slick, man. I love it. Yeah, my favorite. My yeah, favorite so hat. Check out- tftc.io slash merch and during this week of thanks again I said in the bed on Wednesday but truly thankful for you freaks for listening reading uh, engaging in dialogue importantly keeping us in check Uh, we love when you guys keep us in check and stuff like that it feels like there's like a little community developing around whatever the hell this is that we're building and we're just very thankful for you freaks and all the support you've shown us throughout the years pretty crazy to say we can say throughout the years now um and uh yeah keep bitcoining we fucking love you guys i love that because once once you hit over a year you're allowed to say once you hit two years you're allowed to say it it's like those restaurants that are like established 2016 it's like okay dude like i don't like you don't have to list your (laughs) establishment year if it's that recent yeah you put that up at year 20 but anyway i fucking love you all i feel extremely lucky to be here and be a part of this so thank you guys yeah me as well and that was this week's rabbit hole recap. Stay humble, stack sets. Peace and love. <laughs> Peace and love, freaks. Dickie! I think that came out really good. Oh, I'm still recording.